Well, good morning and welcome to Mike Ferry TV. I'm Coach Ron Cronin, and I'd like to talk to you today about a skill development program. You know, as a speaker for the Mike Ferry organization, I have the pleasure of touring North America and helping agents at our workshops, our productivity school, the ultimate workshop, and the three-day listing workshop. And I have the pleasure of speaking to anywhere from two to three to four hundred agents at a time. It's always been amazing to me that when I ask the audience to raise their hands, I'll say, who has had professional sales training and who has run a small business before? Well, out of a 300-person audience, it's very common that I'll have maybe eight hands in the air that they've had sales training and they've run a small business before. Yet everyone in the audience is trying to run a small sales business and support themselves and their family with the income from that small sales business. But the truth is most real estate agents to get a license know that it doesn't really require much to get a license. We don't really learn how to sell. They don't teach us how to list property, how to show property. We basically learn you know, uh, details regarding legality and how to stay out of jail. Okay? But as a salesperson who wants to produce at a high level, obviously you've discovered that you need to have a high level of skill. Now the skill meaning that you know what to say in every sales situation. You have a strong listing presentation. You, have, you know how to handle the common objections. You know how to close for the appointment. These are all things that need to be taught. Most people don't have them when they're born. As a great listing agent, you've probably realized that you need to be great at a few things. You need to be great at setting listing appointments, pre-qualifying the appointments you've set, making a great presentation, presenting the correct price to the seller, presenting commission. You need to be able to overcome objections, get the customer to sign the contract, close for the appointment and signature, and then follow up on presentations that you've made recently and ask them to sign the contract. Those are all the skills that you must be good at in order to sell at a high level. But when I ask agents about their skill development, it's pretty pathetic, to be honest. Most agents are maybe role-playing two or three times a week, but it's light, general role-play. So guys and gals, you have to ask yourself a question. Does your skill development plan, is it challenging for you? Is it causing your growth? Is it causing you to sell more homes? Or are you just role-playing because you're supposed to role-play? So what I've written down are some ideas for you today that could help you get better very, very fast. Help you get better quickly. Let's look, take a look at some of them. When it comes to a skill development plan, you know, consider starting with this. Start with internalizing the scripts. Every great actor, actress, musician, singer, dancer, performer, Every one of them, first thing we do is we learn the words on the scripts that we use. Think about Robert De Niro. Think about Meryl Streep. When Robert De Niro reads a, uh, receives a script, it's simply black words on white pieces of paper. And we've watched him in the movies give those black words on white paper, give them the life, the emotion, the believability, and make a fabulous movie where he has paid millions and millions of dollars. Well, with Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep, or any of them, it starts with memorizing the script. Once the words are memorized and internalized, then we can work on the act, the emotion, the tonality, how it sounds, how it appears. So it starts with internalizing the scripts. If you are a Mike Ferry agent who's been with Mike for years, and you've never really buckled down to memorize them, you've probably lost hundreds of thousands of dollars already in your career. Okay, internalize the scripts as first. Memorizing the pre-qualifying questions would be something else that you can do in the beginning. We have a very detailed pre-qualifying script, series of questions, and memorizing those pre-qualifying questions would be next. The third thing to start with is developing for yourself a canned presentation. A canned presentation where you can go into a seller's house, and within 15 minutes, answer all of their questions, create value, and deliver the information they need in order to make a decision the night you're there. So start with internalizing, memorizing the pre-qualifying questions, and developing a canned presentation. Now that could take a couple of weeks. It might even take a month or two to get that part of it down, but that's okay. 
Once you've got the, the scripts internalized and memorized, well, then what we would do is add to your plan perhaps some daily, intense, challenging role play. Now, that's different than what you may be doing now. See, I know that your role play often starts with a greeting with your role play partner. Oh, hi, it's Ron. Yeah, how was your weekend? Did you have a good time? Okay, good. Let's do some role play today. I'd like to practice some for sale by owners. Let's get started. And then we start. So it's all friendly and easy and comfortable. But that's not how it is on your prospecting calls. So what if you set up your practice, your, your role play in your practice is the same intensity as the calls themselves? Like with your role play partners, you should just call them up. They know what, who's calling at 7.30. It's you ready for role play. They know who it is. You don't need to tell them, it's me. How was your weekend? And all. What we need to do is get right to the point and act as if you were an expired so that you can challenge your role play partner and they can challenge you. Daily intense, right? If you think about a golfer, a professional golfer, he doesn't, to, to improve golf, his golf game, he doesn't go out and play 18 holes of golf. He's going to break it down. Maybe he's going to go hit his driver, hit the long ball. Maybe he's going to practice chipping or putting or hitting out of the sand. They boil it down and improve the weaknesses in their game. Well, where are you weak in your game? Is it with dealing with the reflex no at the beginning of the phone call? Is it closing for the appointment? Is it discussing price and protecting your commission? <clears throat> well, consider those can all be topics for your role play. What if you role played for a week straight or two weeks straight, you were practicing closing five times without giving up, and you practice it once or twice a day for five or ten days? It's going to be so easy and comfortable for you by the time you're done with this practice. Okay? So daily intense challenging role play. Second thing I wrote down to add to your plan would be practicing your skills in front of a mirror. Professional people do this. Professional comedians, actors, practice in front of the mirror to make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. Make sure that your face has emotion and expression and energy in it. Okay? So practicing in front of the mirror. The, the next thing I wrote to add to your plan would be making flashcards for the objections that you're hearing on a daily basis. Right? Flashcards. Well, for instance, you've all seen these before. These are the Mike Ferry trigger cards. And these are all of the scripts and dialogues on three by five cards. And they're designed to help you practice. So you can flip through them and, and study the words and internalize the scripts. Well, what if we had flashcards for our objection handlers? What if we had flashcards? I mean, someone asked me, Ron, how did you get so good at handling objections? My answer was flashcards, just like I learned math when I was a child. I learned with flashcards. Remember that when we were young, they taught us how to learn and how to study, and this was one of the ways. So, for instance, I just made up some for this video, but, you know, if I were you, I would have all the objections that I hear on a regular basis on a flashcard. For instance, I put on this one, wait for the market to improve. We hear that all the time, don't we? We want to wait for the market to improve. So what if I had a card for that, and then on the back, I wrote one or two different ways to handle it, okay? And then I have another card. You know, bring me a buyer, I'll pay you 3%. Or we're going to list with the same agent. Or we're, we have a friend in the business. Right? We hear this all the time, every day. And I don't have an answer. Maybe I should get one. Right? I have a friend in the business. Watch this. We want you to cut your commission. We're going to rent it out. We're going to sell it ourselves. What if I had one, two, maybe three ways that I could handle this? Well, then what I do is I can give these flashcards to my, my spouse, my partner, my kids, someone, my friend, and a coworker, and they can surprise me every once in a while. Ron, how about this? And let's see if I can handle it, right? How about this one? Okay, and I can imagine if you're practicing with these flashcards, you would just be able to just shoot those objections down. Bam, 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 right? Every time, because every day you drill yourself on this. Now, honestly, if you can handle objections, will you, will you make more money? Will you sell more homes, list more property, go on more appointments? Of course you will. It's time to buckle down on your objection handling. Well, once you've got those things going, I said move up to, I've written down move up to recording yourself and on, you know, recording yourself in action, setting listing appointments. I asked a group that I'm working with today, I asked them this question. I asked them, have you ever left your own voicemail greeting? I asked them that question. They said, yeah, I've left my own voicemail greeting. And I said, did you listen to it before you accepted that greeting and made it go live on your phone? And they said, oh, yeah, for sure. 
I, you know, I have to record 10, 15 times before I, I pick one. And I say, let me ask you a question. When you recorded the first one, why did you listen to the recording of your voicemail greeting? Their answer was, well, I wanted to make sure it sounded right. I wanted to make sure it sounded good. And I said, well, that's exciting. Do you record your prospecting calls? Well, no. And I asked them, don't you want that to sound good? And it was just eye-opening for a lot of people. Think about how concerned you are with your voicemail greeting, but you don't ever listen to your, you in action with yourself on the phone with the seller. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. You want to get good? You want to get good fast? Start recording yourself in action. Record your listing presentations. Record your listing presentation role play. Record yourself on the phone prospecting. Record yourself in pro uh, prospecting role play so that you can hear how you sound and make sure that it's the way you want it to sound. It sounds different on the recording. Next thing I wrote down is listing presentation dress rehearsals. I mean, how important is your presentation to getting the signature and getting the deal and getting paid? It's critical. But we never really practice it. Or we, don't, we do it a little bit, or we used to do it, or we did it once in a while. Guys and gals, with the amount of money that's on the line and the fact that there's no money for second place, you need to get that listing. And the best of the best practice on a regular daily, weekly basis. So dress rehearsals of your listing presentation. You know, where you put your suit on and you're looking sharp, it's a dress rehearsal. You have two people that you can practice with and you sit across the table, videotape your presentation. Just like we see how Mike gives us examples at the Superstar Retreat. Make that same kind of a video for yourself. I promise you, you're going to want to make some changes when you see it. I promise. All right. So a couple other things that I wrote down. Share your videos and your recordings with your coach. Share them with your coach so they can make sure that you're doing it right and that you're following the script and that it sounds as good as it can sound. Right? Okay, good. Now, once you've moved up to that, the next step is to top off your, your skill development plan. Top it off. Okay, top it off by shadowing other agents. Shadowing other agents. That's where you find another agent who produces at a high level and you ask them if you can go and just watch them in action at work and sit behind them and watch what they do. If we show you how to do it, can you do it? Yeah, if we show you how. So by shadowing, you can see how someone's actually doing it. Okay, so shadowing is important. Attending Mike Ferry's new productivity school would be very important for you. That's our four-day skills training course, and we do them all over the country, the productivity school. Attending the Mike Ferry Prospecting Clinic. I'm actually hosting a clinic today and yesterday in Las Vegas. We're at, at close to 150 appointments set uh, within the group, and we, you know, we help you learn how to prospect at a higher level at the clinic. Get yourself to one of those programs. Last thought for you with your, develop, your skill development plan is to set up a usable workspace. Guys and gals, for your skills to improve, your workspace has to be supportive. Meaning, you know, imagine if you could set up your workspace where all of the things that you needed were there in front of you at your fingertips. You had your objection handlers, your closes, the scripts you're going to use, some good questions, some you know, things to look at that inspire you. Your workspace, usable, friendly, and a nice place for you to be. Okay, That'll mean that you're in that space more often. And then the, the cool thing is, is if you can set it up, well, all, then you know, imagine if you had all your scripts and objection handlers in front of you. Well, now you don't really have to have them committed to memory yet but you can point and read. When do you plan on moving? And they say never. And I'm going to say never. Terrific. How long have you lived at this address? Ten years. Good for you. <laughs> if you were to sell, where would you go? Where, if you were to move, where would you go next? LA, that's exciting. And I can read my approval words. Everything is there at my fingertips. I just have to kind of point and read and let this guide me. And then eventually, you won't need those things anymore because you'll have it all up in here. With the amount of money that you have at your fingertips that you can make, I mean, these commissions that we can make now, five, 10, 15, $25,000, do you want to have the upper hand? Do you want to have an edge on your competition? Consider knowing what to say is the edge. Mike Ferry said to me one time, Ron, on a listing presentation, five or six of you as agents will go in 
and only one comes out with the contract. We'd like that to be you. Get your skill development program working for you. Read uh, the sell new selling magazine. There's an article in the, on the skill development program in there. We look forward to seeing you on the next Mike Ferry TV. Good luck.